ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron and this here is Beck, my co-host for today. He's not going to be offering up a lot of words, but as you can tell, he is quite animated and also quite distracting when you least expect it. So help me people, help me. Yes, I'm talking about you. But anyways, are you or your family interested in robotics like this, but you want something fun to build that can grow with you from the basics all the way to advance all in one set? Well, I think you might like what I have here. This is the Ki ClickBot, or back is part of it anyway, a STEM-focused coding robot that can, among other things, and I'll show you this in a second, walk up walls. And it's not usually the kind of things that I check out here in Gear Up, to be honest, but this packs more tech in it than you can shake a stick at. So check the ClickBot warrants a closer look. And it's also the kind of toy that you and your kids can use straight out of the box and yet can also MacGyver it to your liking such it's its depth of capabilities. So let's find out ultimately if this is dope or nope after these messages. <laughs> As you can see, there are different modules in any given ClickBot set. KeyEye has four sets for various budgets. There's the starter, the standard, mine is the full, and then there's the kitted out one called the maker's kit. If you really want to make the most of the builds that's available, the full kit is probably a good baseline, but again, it depends on your budget. Let me show you real quick some of the parts you'll find in the full kit. And obviously this is not the full quantity. I couldn't fit it all on this screen, but this one right here is the main hub, the brain, they call it. And it has the OS, the CPU and everything. And it has a really nice touch screen that's responsive um, and also is really bright. And right here, it's flanked by some cameras and sensors. And it has the battery in here as well, charged by USB-C power button is right there. The speakers are really loud as well. Thankfully, you can turn it back down. It also has motion and gyro sensors in here for responding to touch and all that kind of such. See the uh, menu system is right here. Swiping is really nice and fast, awesome stuff. Now the other main part that's really uh, integral to the whole thing, this I'll try to focus, I hope. Um, this is called the joint along with the skeleton right here. When these connect together, they make up the body parts. Uh, and the, the whole frame of the robot pretty much. And these joints are pretty cool. They have servo motors. You can hear it right there, nice and strong. And depending on how you install it, it can be X axis or Y axis, or if you have two or three of them, it can be a Z axis, so 3D pretty much, which is darn cool. Now, this is the wheel and it has a built-in motor as well, nice and fast and quiet, uh, really awesome stuff. And then this, it just looks like feet, right? But they are. Uh, but they also have sensors built in, they're pressure sensors, so if you have this as a pet, for example, if it asks you for a high five, you touch it, it will respond to it. This right here is the grasper, it's really like a lobster claw, soft silicone right here to keep things safe, and also to conform to whatever you uh, want to grab it. The motors are really strong, even in this open position, I can get it to close, it's pretty darn solid. Uh, the other one right here, this in red is called the distance sensor. It can serve as an infrared sensor uh, for measuring distances and uh, up to a point, maybe like a proximity sensor as well. Pretty cool. This is a mount for your camera. If you want to use your robots as a tripod for your camera, for example. This right here is the suction cups. This is what makes it able to walk on walls, up windows and things like that, or carry plates if you wanna use it as a butler. That's pretty darn cool as well. Now, all the parts connect together by means of buckles right here. Let me try to focus again. These are all called buckles and they al align in a different specific way together with the pogo pins. And you just have to make sure the short one lines up with the long one. And let me try to do this here. And it locks in like that. And they really are very secure ones there together. The way to separate them is using a similar motion to breaking off a tree branch just like this and it's done. Now, one thing you'll find plenty of are also LEDs. All these strips right here that you see, all these have LEDs. The wheels, everything have lights on them. And they're not just for like accents, but also serve as indicators to help you as you build. If you connect the wrong part or a wrong orientation, it blinks and tells you where specifically to, that, that you're getting it wrong. It also pulses whenever things like say a firmware update is in progress. It's pretty darn slick, I'll tell you what. 
I'm relatively new to the genre, but if you've ever played with things like Lego Mindstorm or spike sets or smart toys like remember this from a few years ago, Chip the intelligent and affectionate robot dog like I have, you then probably have a pretty solid understanding of what ClickBot is. The biggest plus this robot has is its incredible versatility. You want to stick with simple preset builds, there's plenty to choose from from the app. And if you're bored of that and want to feel your way into programming, the set has multiple ways of getting that done. Most notably the motion and program methods. Now, motion is pretty much like stop motion programming. You basically pose the bot and then save it, freeze it, modify the parameters if you want, then move it again to another pose, save it again, and so on and so forth until you eventually obtain the series of movements or actions that you want. The latter method, it's more advanced, allows you to control granular aspects of operating the robot. You can modify an existing build if you want, or go ahead, create something completely from scratch and write the program for it, like how each joint or accessory moves or which ones you want locked, the intervals and pauses or the interaction capabilities with the brain unit itself. Another cool thing is, whenever you're stuck, the in-app community has tons of beginner to master level builders who you can connect with. I've seen some of these people like build more complex creations like floor sweepers and conveyor belts. Unlike some of the other modular programmable toys on the market right now, the ClickBot allows you to be rough with it at the same time. The build is solid and is meant to be dropped, roughed up, or even fought over. The quality of the plastics, I'll tell you what, is above average. While the components, you can probably hear this through the mic, the servos and solenoids, they operate smoothly with plenty of power. Just be careful with this around liquids, and of course, if you're playing outside with this, exposing it to dirt or mud, because they can get between the joints here. I want to talk about the app real quick. It has been stable during my entire time with the ClickBot, and I'll give it that. And it also serves as the gateway to getting into deeper features and communicating with the larger user community. The negative for me is that the app experience itself is just way too busy. As you can see right here, the colors are too strong. I have no idea. It caters to the younger crowd perhaps, but yet things like the community and the workshop tabs still confuse the heck out of me. They look the same, they operate the same, but yet not. To be fair, this in itself is really a small deal, but when you're trying to learn how to program or download cool mods uploaded by other users, the app isn't super intuitive in finding what you need. A language filter would also be nice because adding to the confusion is that many users post in their native tongue, which can confuse a new user quite easily. The other part of ClickBot that I wish could be better would be charge times for the battery. On average, regardless of the complexity of the build, I've regularly gotten around 2.1 to 2.5 hours of playtime. So for the average builder, that's quite sufficient. However, what if your child wants to run one of those many autonomous pet builds, like having the pet follow them around the house most of the day, interacting with them and all that kind of such? Here's where fast charging would have been super nice here, or maybe a swappable battery, or a second brain included in a box with another battery in it, that would have helped so much. This right here is what they call the base mount, and this is crucial for back and similar vertical builds, and it relies on this sticky base with a sticky decal for stability on whatever smooth surface you have it on. Now the decal itself is strong, really strong, I've never had any of these tip over, and so I hear you ask, uh, so what are you fussing about then, Aaron? Well, it turns out that the sticky tape used at the bottom here is a one-time use thing. Maybe twice at most if you're using it on glass maybe. Now, Kiai does provide 10 replacement decals, but that means you have to buy more when you run out. And I'm not a fan of that kind of consumables. And the last time I checked, it was like $20 for a 20 pack on Amazon. Still, not a fan of it. Some of you who watched the unboxing video recently commented that the ClickBot is truly an attractive piece of kit, but the cost gives you pause. However, think about this for a second. The price is quite comparable to Spike or Mindstorm sets, especially once you start buying beyond the starter packs. Those things can quickly add up in cost as well. The beauty of the ClickBot is it's simple to build and yet, and this is my favorite part, tough enough to withstand some heavy play or inadvertent coding mistakes. Don't ask me how I found out. The community of builders is also super strong. There's always new designs or ideas to try out or even collaborate on. 
And come on, which toy robot have you recently seen walk up walls? Yes, I know, right? If you're interested, the links are down below. And here's where we get to the final score. I'm giving the Kiai Clickbot a gear up score of 8.5 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about it, feel free to comment down below. Now, alternatively, if you prefer something simpler or earlier I mentioned something about autonomous pet robots, well, Kiai is actually launching something new called Luna, a robot pet that wheels around your home engaging with your family members autonomously. You can even give it commands. And the last time I checked, there were quite a lot of them. And when you say it, Luna will do it. It's actually designed with similar concepts as the ClickBot, but it focuses on being a robot pet first of all. And get this, it has tons of sensors to keep it safe around the house, like it has face, body, movement, emotion, gesture, object, and edge recognition. That's a whole buttload there. And I'll give it this at least, it's quite possibly cleaner than owning a real dog, yes. I'm not sure if there's gonna be an SDK launch for it as well so you can program it on your own, but we'll find out later on. It's gonna start as a Kickstarter and then move on from there. So I'll share more details as they become available down below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Thank you so much for being here. Remember to show your support if you'd like to see more videos like this. Subscribe to this channel, mash the button down below, share it with your friends and family, get me to 50,000 subs, and also visit me on my Patreon page and also the super thanks button down below there are a couple ways that you can financially support this channel as well. Remember to thumbs up if you like this video, comment nicely down below, and remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what guys? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. Peace out, I love y'all, and I'll see you the next time. Whoosh.